ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. All right, now, okay, so we're doing this. We're doing this once again. And I'd like to welcome whoever's tuning in, tapping in, plugging in to Talking Slop with Senna Orshi. Um, we've been doing a few of these now. And um, just to give a little insight to people who may be tuning in for the first time, what this is all about. Talking Slop is basically about talking slop. And talking slop for translated into English dialect might be easily translatable to talking shit. And, um, and that comes out of something, you know, many conversations that I've had with people as well as inspirations geared around the shit. You know, because shit is important, you know, shit is deep, shit is divine, you know, and shit happens sometimes. You've got to get through some shit and get out of shit sometimes. So, um, and don't give a shit. say that again, and don't give a shit, yeah, and don't get shit twisted, <laughs> you know. And, um, at the same time, we know, you know, as a horticulturalist as well, that um, shit plays a very key role in keeping things going, keeping things turning around. So what we would consider waste, you know, muck, you know, smelly, you know, vile, is actually the divine essence that's required to keep Mother Nature doing her thing. So bringing it all back home, we know that talking shit takes place. I talk a lot of shit. I'm around a lot of people who talk a lot of shit. But what I found out when we talk shit sometimes, some divine shit comes out of that shit. So with that said, we know that the tone of shit is energy, it's loaded, and we'd be exploring that over the weeks of going into all of this talking slop. Because the slop, <laughs> which um, has been coined by you know, many um, people in the past, and means many different things to people. But from a funkadelic perspective, we know that the slop is just that, it's the shit, but it's the funkadelic shit. And we refer to it as the slop, it's the gunk. It's the place where all the funky music comes from, germinates from. It's like in the, um, in the drain, you know, if you flush your drain, there's always that bit at the bottom that just sits there, you know, <laughs> sits there, man. And I can't flush it out. And it's just got, you know, by seeing that, in that, there's some shit there, man. And um, that's what this is all about, talking slop, that slop. So um, we're going to bring the funk, we're going to make it funky, we're going to make it flow. It's very organic. I don't have any questions lined up or planned. This is all just based on who I know of you, what I know of you, what you're going to share about you. And then we're going to build on that and take it from there. So how I've started off, started them off so far is by you allowing yourself to introduce yourself. <laughs> so thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to talk shit. <laughs> um, I'm really honored to be here. Um, live from Amsterdam at home. Uh, my name is Senna. I was born here in Holland in the south of the Netherlands. Uh, my parents are from Morocco and I was raised in a Muslim family. I help people in the transformational process. So I help them develop on a personal level mental level, spiritual level, on a physical level. And uh, today we're talking shit, so I don't know what we're going to be talking about, but hey, we'll see. All right, cool. Thank you for sharing. So um, just to piggyback off that, you know, I became aware of you and your work on my travels back and forth to Amsterdam. A few years back now, I became aware of you through some workshops that I was facilitating as well as some stuff that you was doing in a central location in Amsterdam. And um, I was inspired by your work. So in addition to that, I know that you have a background in um, clothing, um, yes. you know, as well as, you know, media and other, you know, other areas. So you've got a few tools in your toolbox. And um, I say that to say, just like I said to some other people I've interviewed, I've interviewed some people that I know really well that I've grown up with as well as people that I've known for a few years like yourself. And some of them have been interviewed and they're interviewed often. And um, this is not an interview, just to, just to highlight. But um, what I don't want to do is go over the stuff or cover stuff that if any other interview you would have been covering, you know, we're really just going to get it to find out who you are. Like just so anybody tuning in who might be a fan of yours or just checking you out, we'll just get another perspective outside of whatever other interviews you may have done. So um, we'll just see where we go with that. But um, 
where I want to open it up with is um, you mentioned your practitioner of you know various body practices and mind development and working with spirit. Um, when I first came aware of your work, it was geared more around yoga, I believe, um, some yoga, yoga um, workshops that you were delivering. Um, I believe it might have been Kundalini yoga. I'm aware, if I'm if I remember correctly, and that's the type of um, interest that I had. You know, previously, I would say, not at that time, but um, what I found interesting about it was the way that it was being presented. Uh, um, <laughs> Um, I've had an interest in body work and I'm really on it right now at the moment. But um, previously, uh, what I would say was maybe the models and the way it was presenting me to before wasn't engaging enough to hold me. And um, around that time, there was yourself and maybe one or two others that I felt had models or structures that were complementary to my approach into wanting to learn more about yoga. So I would just like to start there. That's where I want to start because that's how we met. That's how I would know about you and what you're doing. So um, tell us about your journey into yoga. And let's just yeah, let's start with that. If that's cool. my, that's, that's my journey into yoga, when I started yoga, I actually started it because of my sister. My sister just opened a Bikram yoga school. And um, um, because her classes were still empty, she asked me or she told me I had to come every day for two weeks. So I did to be a very brave, humble sister. But I hated it. I hated the classes. I hated the poses. I hated everything. It was too hot. It was too difficult. So yoga, my introduction to yoga was really just to support my sister in something that she just started. And... Um, I've done it for two weeks, then I went back home to Amsterdam. And it took me a couple of days before I was like, oh, I kind of missed something. And I didn't know exactly what it was, but then I thought, ah, I think that yoga just really done something. And I've done it two weeks and then I stopped. For, stopped. So I decided to jump back in. I uh, searched for another uh, Bikram yoga school in Amsterdam and I just took my classes. So for me, when I started yoga, it was really more like a physical practice. Okay. Um, I, I just felt like, okay, it's cool. It, you know, I feel good with it. I feel you know, a bit more clear in my head. But physically, I just felt really, really good. So that was the reason for me to just continue yoga. And it was a couple months, maybe even a year or a year and a half later, that's when I discovered Kundalini yoga. And in the meantime, I already tried a couple other styles. But when I experienced Kundalini yoga, that's when I realized like, oh, wow, yoga is much more than just a physical exercise. Um, it's not just, you know, to get in, in, into form or to become physically stronger or, you know, to gain mental clarity. It's much, much more. It's really a practice on a spiritual level. And the way I label it, it's, it's like a technology for your body it's a technology for your mind to your spirit and that's what i later on discovered with kundalini yoga okay so that's my own practice right mm. um, and later uh that's when i met you actually that's when i met you in that same journey um you pointed me in the direction the ancient origins of yoga um, because I also believed, you know, looking at the different styles, that it all comes from India. So, um, yeah, that's the only thing that I knew about yoga and the Indian origins. But that's when you told me about the Asian African yoga, Asian African origins of yoga. And from that period in my life, I discovered Kemetic yoga, Smaitawi and um, learned again about the deeper uh, philosophy and the deeper meaning of yoga, of body work, of this mental practice, the spiritual practice. 